Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm glad to be back. This time, uh, last week, I was uh, uh, traveling to uh, Dallas, Texas, to go out there to Plano, Texas, to be a part of a pastor's briefing with the watchman on the wall, and we had a tremendous time. But I must admit, I miss being with you. I miss being able to talk to you and uh, for us to share, our, spend our time together. So I am glad to be back. I will be here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight for... Bible study. Yes, <laughs> Bible study. I want to get it in early, but let me tell you something. I am fired up. I'm wondering what in the world is wrong with the world. We've, we've got some people who have lost their minds. I mean, they're up in the air. They're, they're, they're having hissy fits because of an illegally a uh, very rare, if ever, leak document by someone whom I pray gets discovered and gets disbarred. Uh, a leak draft document, you've heard about it, from the Supreme Court uh, that uh, seems to be leaning, and I'm smiling, toward overturning Roe, which would not end uh, abortion in our country, but it would send it back to the states and let the people uh, in each state uh, vote on whether or not, uh, whether they want to uh, kill babies. And all this is connected to the Mississippi law and all, uh, 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 all this stuff is going on. Now listen, now listen to me now. I want to read something to you and I'm, I'm, I'm just fired up about this. All right. Uh, this is uh, according to um, uh, NBC, one of the worst. Uh, it says, President Joe Biden describes a radical, and I guess it is radical when you use the definition of, of radical uh, with, with, with regards to fundamental change, but it can't be radical if you say it's far-reaching and it's out of the mainstream. Because it is not out of the mainstream. 49% of Americans uh, claim to be pro-choice and 47% of Americans are pro-life. Well, when the numbers are that close, then we're dealing with something that is not out of the mainstream. That is very much a part of the American culture, on the minds of Americans, and Americans are divided on this issue. Now, the President Joe Biden describes as radical, a draft opinion that indicates the Supreme Court is poised to overturn the constitutional right to an abortion and said it could jeopardize, jeopardize other rights. Now watch how he makes this up, including the right to use contraception and, oh, we can't touch this one, same-sex marriage. Now, the first thing I noticed was the pedagogy of the uh, 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 Shannon Pretty Piece of uh, NBC as she uh, did this story, uh, I noticed she said Politico published a draft opinion Monday, Monday night indicating that the Supreme Court would overturn Roe, Roe v. Wade. Now, I, first thing I noticed was, uh, where's the word leaked? Where's the word leaked? It was a leaked, an illegally leaked uh, uh, draft. I think leak ought to be in there. See, that's pedagogy. You got to pay attention, not just to what is said, but how it is said, because you know and I know, had that been a, 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 a Republican, they would have put the emphasis on how horrible it is for it to be leaked. Why would they leak this? This goes against the sanctity of the Supreme Court. Oh, my Lord, the court is supposed to be above politics. Why would someone leak such a document? And not one, uh, I hate to say it, but not one Democrat has even bemoaned the fact that it was leaked. And if this was a court of law, it would be dismissed because it's fruit of the poisonous tree. But anyway, the president says, if this decision holds, it is really, it is really quite a radical decision. Biden told reporters before he departed on Air Force One. Uh, for a planned trip to Alabama. 
And so he says this goes far beyond concern for a right to choose. It goes to other basic rights, the right to marry, or really, uh, uh, the right to determine a whole range of things, such as, he doesn't give them, as uh, Biden said, who was the chairman of the Judiciary uh, Committee when he was a member of the Senate? So this is, uh, they're having a fit. Now, keep in mind, all this is about killing babies. Killing babies. And uh, uh, our Vice President, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, she weighed in uh, as she was uh, this Tuesday night at an event for Emily's List, a group of a group that supports female Democrat candidates who support abortion rights. Abortion rights also framed the ruling as one that went beyond the issue of abortion. How would she know? But look at this. Uh, <laughs> she says this. The rights of all Americans are at risk. Now, if Roe B. v. Wade is overturned, then the rights of all all Americans are at risk, Harris said in a statement. If the right to privacy is weakened, every person should face, uh, could face a future in which the government can potentially interfere in the personal decisions you make about your life. Kamala, like taking the shot, the government's already doing that. The vaccines, you were one of them. You were one of them that said uh, taking the vaccine, getting vac vaccinated, I want to quote you, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is trying to appeal to people's faith in the vaccine hesitancy. Quote, I do believe the act of getting vaccinated is, is the very essence of what the Bible tells us when it says, love thy neighbor. Now, do you think that's what Moses had in mind? Do you think that's what Jesus had in mind? Do you think that's what the authors of the Bible had in mind? Taking a vaccine. This is how um, a, a vaccine that was rushed to market uh, where they won't even tell you about the side effects. You can't sue the vaccine makers if you do have side effects. And uh, and there's really uh, uh, the, the, the science behind much of what they're telling us to do isn't there. And. And so she's going to appeal to people's faith. I can't believe it. So she says this, uh, this is uh, the, this is the time to fight for women and for our country with everything we have. In a statement earlier Tuesday, Biden reiterated his support for a constitutional right to abortion, which you won't find that in the constitution. It's implied. It's implied. They, they made that up. It's a made up right. It's not in the, in the, in the constitution anywhere, find it and, and send it to me and I'll go on and do a retraction. Uh, he said, uh, uh, for a constitutional right for a, a, an abortion and urge the election of more lawmakers who support abortions rights. I believe that, that a woman's right to choose is fundamental role has been the law of the land for almost 50 years. That is true. But you know what? America is a 246 years old. So that means for 147 years, it wasn't the law of the land. So, all right. So if we're going to stress that it was the law for approximately 50 years, but what about the 147 years when it wasn't the law? We got along just fine. And, oh, you know what? You got to, you got to uh, put race in it. Because black folk, they think we're stupid. Nothing kills more African Americans than abortion. The abortion industry targets us. If blacks stop having abortions, the abortion industry in this country will go out of business. They love it. They love it when we go in to kill our own. They enjoy it. They smile at you, give you a lollipop or whatever, whatever, when you're going in to kill your own. And, you know, look at this. Uh, here's a headline from USA Today. People of color, people of color, the poor and other marginalized people to bear the brunt if Roe v. Wade is overturned. People of color and other marginalized low income people will be most 
affected by the overturning of landmark abortion case Roe v. Wade. Health and policy experts said after a leaked Supreme Court draft opinion uh, was published by Politico. Thank God USA Today didn't mention that it was leaked. In the draft, leaked draft opinion, Associate Justice Samuel Alito wrote, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. He said Roe was egregiously wrong, egregiously wrong from the start and, and called it, its reasoning weak. Now, what the man, what, what, we're, what what's really at stake here, my friends, and I'm going long and I got to wrap this up, but we haven't talked in a while. What's really at stake here is whether or not the federal, that it should be left up to the federal government or just send it down and let each state decide. So why are you afraid of le- allowing the people's voice to be heard? Put it to a vote. If it's that bad, the people will vote uh, to uh, uphold it at each state. But if not, then uh, people should be able to weigh in on this issue. We're talking about an issue of life and death. We're talking about kids being killed in the womb. And please spare me when, when you call abortion health care. Health care for whom? To kill a viable baby in the womb simply because you don't want it. How is that health care? Is it health care for the baby? How is it health care for the mother? How can you call abortion a unnatural man-made interruption of a process? That's what abortion is. It's not natural. Oh, it's not a miscarriage. It's not natural. It's is man interfering in the natural course of nature. Since when has that been called health care? Is the pregnant woman sick? Does she need medicine because she's sick? Did getting, now getting pregnant now when you don't want to be pregnant is now a disease for which you need treatment from? You, let, me, let me tell you something. Not only is this reasoning uh, weak, this reasoning is wicked. It's wicked. God made women to have children. God blessed you to be able to give birth. And for those who may be watching and you've had an abortion and you've repented of your sins, please don't cry over that. Please don't get depressed. Please don't turn me off. Please don't stay home from church. Ain't nobody talking to you. But we are talking to these living devils who are trying to promote this stuff. I mean, you can always find a sister. You can always find somebody black to help promote, uh, I guess this is reproductive justice. I'm telling you, Gary, something's wrong with us. There's something wrong when we call uh, things like this reproductive uh, uh, justice. More, I, I've got to go. More than half of the nation's black population live in the South where women of color, including Hispanic women, make up a significant proportion. Significant proportion. The Plains uh, states also have a large indigenous population. Days ago, the Oklahoma legislature passed a six-week abortion ban similar to that adopted in Texas last year, where, uh, look at this, let me read this quote, we don't We know that it's going to impact those who already have barriers to health (laughs) care. Abortion is not health care. Even before an abortion ban said women's health and reproductive rights policy expert Fatima Goss Graves. Now she notice they call abortion reproductive rights. When there is no reproduction in abortion. These people are crazy. Or they think you are. There's no reproduction in abortion. Abortion stops reproduction. That's the point. But they know they can't be honest with you about it. See, anything that that you're for that you can't be honest about tells you right there that there's something wrong. So they call it health care, a woman's reproductive rights. Uh, no, it's not reproduction. There's no, no life comes out of an abortion. And when a baby accidentally, by the grace of God, by a, a divine intervention, survives one, 
Then the doctors let it starve to death or they try to kill it. Something is badly wrong. There's wickedness going on in these people. Don't you think that this is just politics? Don't you be that simple. Don't you be that ignorant. Don't you be that carnal. Don't you be that spiritually blind. The God of the Bible is offended by the slaughter of the unborn. And oh God, I pray, I pray that the draft holds up. Let me read this and I'm going on. I got to go. I'm going to preach about it tonight. I'm going to talk about it. Now I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to tune in. Praise the Lord. Did I mention that I was fired up? I am because this is wicked. This is wickedness. Look at this. You got to got to bring color into it. Oh, my. And this lady, she's an attorney and the president of the National Women's Law Center. Those who live in rural areas, women of color, those who have low income. Oh, she talked about the one that's going to be uh, uh, affected if Roe is overturned. People may travel hundreds of miles to uh, to get to states where abortions are still allowed. Young, low income people who are disproportionately of color, you know, all of the uh, gobbledygook. Uh, she's getting all of the terms right. Uh, may not be able to afford the cost of travel. I guess the worst thing that will happen then is a baby will live. This will be a giant and larger hurdle placed uh, in front of them, Graves said. Uh, most people who seek abortion care already have children, and they may not have time, time off work, access to child care, the things they need to be need to be able to leave their community and get constitutionally protected health care. Oh, my. And guess who's teamed up? It makes sense, Brother Gary. Centers for American Progress Attorney and Women's Health Policy Analyst uh, Elisa Spitzer noted the woman of color and LGBTQ people already experience bias and discrimination in health care. Oh, really? What? What discrimination? You guys, if you're in the military, the taxpayers are paying for you to get it whacked off or get it cut in. What discrimination? You have, you have, you have special rights. Taxpayers are paying for them to put artificial booze, man, in your chest. And to remove your perfectly healthy ones, lady, because a voice in your head is telling you that you're a man. The devil is a liar. I'm going to talk about this tonight. I've gone too long. But you know what? We've got to speak to it. Because I don't want anybody to wonder where we stand, what, what the Bible says. I can't wait to. If I start reading now, I'm going to give away my text. And I can't do it. So you got to tune in tonight. But God speaks to these things. God speaks to these things. And the Bible is right. So my friends, join me tonight for a fired up Bible study. We're going to study the word of God together. And I pray to God. I pray. I'm just going to be honest with you. I pray that the draft holds up. I pray that Roe v. Wade is uh, overturned. And I pray that it is sent back to the states and you know what I want to see and want to be a part of the showdown, not the showdown between the church world and the pro-abortion world, but the showdown that will take place between the church world and the church world. For there are many of you who claim to know Jesus Claim to be washed in the blood. Claim to believe the scripture. And you support abortion. And I'm here to say to you, to your face. Well, at least on this medium, both can't be true. When you read what God says about, what David said about how he was fearfully and wonder, wondrously made, formed in his mother. When you read about what God said to Jeremiah before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. When you read about the wickedness of King Manasseh, King Zedekiah, how they were offering children to the wicked God Molech. Nobody born again in spirit field can support such a procedure. 
Now, I'll see you tonight. And I mean every word I say. One thing about it, when I make a point, I do my best. Whether you agree with me or not, I don't want to be nuanced. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm equivocating. I want to quote the Reverend Jesse Jackson in my conclusion. Abortion is genocide to the black community. Oh, that's what he said before he ran for the office of the presidency. I forgot. But it's still true, though. See you tonight.